Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Simply Nerdy. Uh, this is Anthony hosting today, and I'm joined by Stephen and Lisa. We couldn't help ourselves, and we decided we needed to make another video on Xenoblade 3 because uh, we're just that excited about it, and we thought we'd try to get you guys excited too, <laughs> especially those of you who are on the fence about it. My tack here for this video is to explain why you should try Xenoblade 3. Steven has declared himself traditionally a non-JRPG fan, and, and I guess in a way that's the audience that I'm kind of talking to with, with my thoughts here on why, even as a non-JRPG fan, that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 could be worth your time. These are just my opinions and thoughts, but um, let us tell you why this is a, a very a game that's very worth your while and then and then maybe we'll and then we'll also talk a little bit at the end about some tips we've learned of ways that you can keep the game fresh so anyway without further ado i'll just kind of jump into the little list we put together here um and i'll start with one that i feel like is kind of the elephant in the room for a lot of people who have trouble with jrpgs is um, the traditional slow start what i think we can safely say about xenoblade 3 is that it doesn't have a slow start I mean, from, from everything we've heard from the previews and, and also like the trailers that we've been shown, it throws you right in the middle of this massive conflict. And it seems to even ramp up more and more from there. You're in the middle of this battle, you know, it's a, it's a world shattering conflict that has been going on for, for a long time. And uh, you're taking on the role of someone who's been at it for, for all their life. Our number two point, which is just how good these combat systems are in these games, and particularly how it looks like Xenoblade 3 is going to be. Um, I've had it posed to me, how can a game that uses auto-attacking have a good combat system? <laughs> get, your, get your notebooks out and uh, turn to, to page 23 of the textbook. Okay, anyway. <laughs> the thing that I love about Xenoblade is just how how streamlined they make it for you to be able to focus on the, tac the tactical choices that make the, the, the combat such a cerebral and enjoyable experience. With this combat system, you know, you, you want to go so much deeper than just what these, the you know, the, the traditional, like, hitting the enemy does. Um, and that's where the arts come in, and that's where things really start getting a lot more interesting. Yes, you're, you're, you're kind of dependent on allowing the character to auto-attack now and then to build up your arts if you're using Agnes arts or uh, you know or just waiting until you get the chance to use one again but what I feel like the auto attacking does is it is it just allows you to instead focus on you know the, the deeper aspects of the combat system which is you know the positioning that makes arts more effective you know learning which arts have synergies with one, one another you know I, I think that would kind of disappear if normal attacks were mapped to a button press because then I feel like you know, it would be very easy for the game to turn into a button masher. The thing with games where you don't auto attack is that the thing that adds complexity and like interest to the combat in those games is usually like, uh, oh, I need to do this many hits and then I have to dodge because I know the enemy is going to attack me or I'm, I'm going to do, I don't know, just basically stuff like that. Whereas in this game, the complexity is added in other ways, like it's up to your character and their evasion stat, whether they're going to evade or not, it's not something you control. And so that's abstracted away so that there can be other things that add to the combat complexity and interest. So uh, the way that you do your arts, the way that you do chain attacks and stuff. And and there's, it uh, seems like there's so many more layers in Xenoblade 3 in particular, because uh, so first of all, we have the layers introduced of uh, you know, being able to switch your classes, which gives you access to new arts and new skills. We don't know what those skills manifest as, uh, you know, but uh, that that probably, I mean, that could make a major change in, in, in how you play. You have the fusion arts, then, you know, you move on to talking about uh, the Ouroboros transformations and, uh, and how much that's going to switch up the the pace of the combat and then there's the chain attacks of course like there's there's a whole bunch of layers being piled on here that i feel like would be hard to focus on if you were in charge of the the more minor stuff yeah i think it would quickly become overwhelming let's just talk for a moment about the the effect that being able to switch your characters mid battle 
does for this system. That's that's a first for the Xenoblade series. Um, out of battle, yeah, it has to be in your menu. So you can't do that in, in a given battle. You're stuck with the person that you're playing. The idea that this is so seamless, it's going to be such a major change. Uh, you know, the moment they, they confirmed that that was how it worked, I, I remember exclaiming, this is going to have the best combat system ever designed. A few of the other things that, that um, I have to include. The soundtracks for Xenoblade are basically peerless. They're almost all incredible. Um, and uh, I think that's part of what makes them such magical games is because, I don't know, the emotions of the story are driven home so much better by how good that music is. I think, uh, the, I, I do have to say, the one exception is probably Xenoblade X. That game does not have a very good OST, if you ask me. It had some really good songs, though. Oh, yeah. It had the bangers in there. Oh yeah, no, I'll, I'll grant that. Basically, as a long-time Xenoblade fan, I can I can tell you that um, this is going to be an incredible soundtrack. So that's that's another big thing. I guess the last point I was going to highlight um, is that Xenoblade games, again with the exception of Xenoblade X, have some pretty fantastic stories. I know that you know I was kind of talking about how Xenoblade One and Two do kind of suffer from a bit of a slow start, but. What they always tend to do is they focus so much on the deep plot elements that just make, you know, give those those shocking surprises, those those cool, you know, unforeseen twists that just really, you know, get you thinking. I, I, I don't I'm not able to, to say very much about this without spoiling things, but I'm definitely one of those people. There's there's quite a few of us who would argue that Xenoblade Chronicles 1 has basically the best plot uh, ever created for a video game. At any rate, everyone, this is this is kind of a very truncated list of all the reasons that we feel like it would be worth your while to check out Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Um, all of our sure. current reasons. We all, of our, have all of our current reasons, yes. What we kind of wanted to move on to now was to uh, to talk a little bit about what, uh, kind of like the, the tips we would give as longtime RPG fans to people who are intimidated by JRPGs and how you can keep them fresh. AKA tips to avoid burnout. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> AKA tips for Steven. Uh. Yeah. So, so one of the tips is one that Anthony already mentioned earlier, and that's that uh, basically variety is the spice of life. If you're playing a character and you don't like the way they play, or you're playing a character and you've gotten bored, there's there's many classes that you can switch to, or many characters that you can switch to. I mean, it's a whole part of the. It's a cornerstone of this combat system that you're switching characters. So so the other tip is probably one of the most important tips because it is a tip that a lot of people seem to struggle with and that's that you do not need to do all of the side quests at once. Guess what? You don't even need to do all of them ever. <laughs> that's good to know because that's very intimidating. What you do is you go into a town and you see all these side quests and you think, oh no, you don't have to think, oh no. What you do is you go and you get all of the side quests and you put them in your little, you put them in your side quest tab and then you forget about them until you're ready. And you know, sometimes you'll be doing the story for a while and you're like, you know what? I feel like my characters aren't, aren't leveled enough. I could probably gain some levels pretty quickly by doing side quests, because side quests are usually a really good source of EXP, uh, a bit better source than fighting enemies. So they're they're a little more valuable for grinding than grinding enemies. So that's another tip, I guess. You can just go and collect them all, and sometimes you'll finish side quests just while going about the rest of your game. And so if you're anything like me, this this is my tip to you. If you're hoarding your gem materials because you think if you make them, you're gonna make them wrong and waste your materials, guess what? If they're sitting in your inventory not being used, you are wasting them anyway. Uh, also, at some point your inventory will get full and then you'll have to make gems or else just let all the new materials go to waste. So use them even if you make them terribly, even if you're not you're not making them well, or you're messing everything up, that's better than them just sitting there and stressing you out. So, that's my two cents about the gem making. I don't know how it will be in this game. So hopefully we haven't 
intimidated you guys by giving all of our tips uh, because some of this is <laughs> kind of layered. There's I'm a lot intimidated. here. Well, <laughs> dang it, Steven. I think you guys did a really good job of explaining. Well, good. Well, thanks. Anyway, we just think that this, this game is it's going to be very special. It's going to be very unique. Um, and I think that uh, you should all give it a try. Um, you know, even if you have trouble with these type of games, I feel like uh, Xenoblade is already a JRPG that's made for non-JRPG fans, and I feel like that Xenoblade 3 is going to be particularly special in that regard. Um, and it just, it looks like it's going to be fantastic. And I guess we'll end it there. Just give it a shot. There's a lot of, there's a lot of really good reasons why it could be very worth your time. So, until next time, keep, keep it, it nerdy. nerdy.